So there are a couple of tips, different ways to do the invisible seams. I'm going to show you two ways. So this is one reason why you buy these steam generating irons. They give a lot of steam. And that's important, okay, when you're pressing. There's a difference between pressing and ironing. And pressing means you're pressing in the seam as opposed to removing creases. So what I've done is, on this side, I'm going to turn over the hem, and then turn up the hem to one inch. So you could do this on whatever dress you want. You could do it to three. Actually, I'll do it to three. Three. I'll do it to one inch. I will do it to one inch here. So it's half inch that I've turned over, but it could be whatever you want. So I've just turned it over here. And what you want to do is make sure this is good. So I've not got the iron up so hot that it's going to burn if I leave it there a couple seconds because that's where the advantage of the steam generating iron <clears throat> it pumps out steam even on lower temperatures. Okay. That's good and secure now. All right on this side, I'm not going to. I'm going to keep the raw edge. So one way is you could zigzag over the edge to hold it down, which I will do. But then, or if you don't want to do that, there's lots of different. But I'm just going to do. So if you don't have the space to do the extra, you just do one inch. So that's going to be on this side. Press there, looks like it's slightly bendy. That's how it is. Okay. So, you have to make sure if you just twist it on this one, press it back so it's not twisted. So one's got a raw edge and one's got a folded edge. You can see the difference there. Let's just make sure you can see what's going on and we'll zoom in. So there's the raw edge, and there's the folded edge. So depending on what you want, both of those are viable options. You just have to keep in mind that you must do something with this to keep it from unfraying. However, if you're putting a lining in and hand stitching it to that, then it doesn't really matter because you'll be keeping it on the inside and it will, it will be less likely to fray. So you can just do a straight stitch along there two straight stitches or a zigzag and then it'll be protected in the lining. But anyway, there's that. So, we will move over to the machine. <clears throat> so, I have a one inch seam here and I've pressed, put my seam guide at seven eighths. So instead of eight eighths, I've done it at seven eighths. You could do it at six eighths if you want. But what it means is the straight part of the stitch is going to always be we're at the correct place. So the idea is you want to make sure that you're leaving either one eighth or or quarter inch to sew on. So you put it so you're sewing at on the straight bit at seven eighths of the seam. And to do that you have to put your um, seam guide here at where you want to sew on the straight. So make sure your, your zigzag foot or your if you're using a blind hem foot is set exactly so you're sewing in the straight where you go. So let me just check that that matches on there. Yeah. 
So that's how it looks from that side. And what I'll do is I'll show you from the other side. because So cool. here we are. So we are now sewing on the finished. So I've got it set so it should sew straight here without touching the fabric. And then it's going to zigzag over. And it does two on this particular attachment. And you just have to make sure that you keep that always perfectly. This is definitely not something you want to rush because you want to make sure the quality and what I found it helpful with this attachment is to make sure your, your upper thread tension is low because you need to pull this apart when you're done and you want it to, um, to pull without creating a crease. You can go faster than this if you want, but I'm in no particular hurry. But if you go faster, it's if it goes, it's more likely to go wrong. So, since you want to get it right first time, this is one that I find is. It's not worth going too fast because you really need to make sure it's catching only just slightly when it does the zigzag. But I really think this is kind of a, a very nice attachment to use. It's, I think, very similar in ease to actually using a blind stitch and foot. So blind, automatic blind stitch and a foot. So it's, it's perfectly fine. You know, some people complain about the zigzag attachments being the lesser than the zigzag machine. And yeah, that's, they're more difficult to use, but in some situations they work fine. But in this case, this works absolutely just fine. You get very, very good results from a mechanical attachment. So once we're getting to the end now... Okay... So I'll just pull that out, and what you can see there is the actual stitch, so, you know, it's fine. And then on the other side, voila, and I shall press this afterward, there's your invisible, and you would normally not do it in, in navy blue thread on white, but you can see it's pretty invisible. So that's a, a very good result, okay? So let's do the other side for fun. So we make sure our threads are in the back. And this time we're sewing on a raw edge. So it's actually a little more difficult to gauge where to sew. When you've got a perfectly pressed seam, it, it's, it's a lot easier. So sometimes you'll find it's worth doing the pressing. However, I'm not going to do it here just for fun. So because you've got a raw edge there, it's a little more difficult to get it perfectly lined up. But anyway, we shall proceed. Okay, there's the zigzag. And there's the straight zigzag. And what you can see by this is in some ways that you might not necessarily need to worry about the frayed edge there because you are sewing it quite a small. I've got my stitch length set to 12. But this attachment itself seems to reduce, I don't know why, but the stitch length, so it's quite, well maybe not, it's just an optical illusion, it is at, t it is about t 10 to 12, it just looks very small because it's very dense, the way this is. So, I'm getting this done. So this is a lot faster than sewing these hems by hand. <laughs> you know, and I don't have, I don't have the luxury of getting a blind hemming sewing machine. I could do, but I'm so short of room, and I don't often need anything fancier than this. This is pretty good. 
considering you know, I don't do miles and miles and miles and miles of blind hems except when I'm making home curtains. Um, and this will do just fine. I mean, it doesn't take very long to do even 60, well, in my case, I had 20 meters of curtains to do, and this worked absolutely fine. You know, if it takes you an hour to do the blind hem, well, whoopee flip. And it's a very, you know, it's a very nice, peaceful thing to do this on a, on a Singer 201 here, which is what I'm doing on with the, the Singer blind stitch attachment. And I find that sometimes the plastic foot, the little guide thing, your fabric tends to skid under, underneath it. Of course, because your, your, this attachment has to be quite firmly uh, placed, it, it's less prone to escape. So actually I find it gives a very, you know, in some ways a better result. So there's, there it is sewn like that. And that's how it looks on that side. So obviously, if you're if you're joining lining and stuff, you wouldn't have to worry. So I'm going to give this a press and let's see what it looks like. Okay, so here we're doing a real thing. Now I can offer a little hint that seems counterintuitive, but what you really want to do, you don't want to press it. Uh, as in with an iron, but what you want to do is make sure this fold is as flat as, a pos as possible when it passes under there because of the way the needle presses. The smaller that little fold is when it catches it, the less shows up on the reverse side. So that's the easiest way to be sure that you um, get a really good Invisible. So what I'm doing is just dragging my hand along this seam to keep it good and flat. And then what you can do is press it out when you get finished. And it'll be more invisible that way. Even though it seems like you're pressing in a seam, what you're actually doing is just making sure the needle catches as little fabric as possible. So when it bubbles up like that, you really want to avoid those bubbles. So now I'm coming up to something quite thick, so you may find you want to roll the fabric back just a tidgy bit so it catches a bit less of it when it gets to a thicker seam and you go across the seam. And that's good, so continue on. We want to do it again. very, very, very long, it's all around, so I shall show you the finished product. So there's the uh, invisible hem. See it there? Zoom in on it, it's pretty good, isn't it? I mean, if you do it by hand, or you can do it by machine and you can get exactly the same result. So I'm very pleased with that. Not bad for an ancient attachment, is it?